One end of the diving board is fixed to give the other end the bounce required for a big splash cannonball or a graceful swan dive. To make the diving board's shell, workers load a sheet of acrylic into a clamping machine, which transports it into an oven. The oven heats the sheet for about 30 seconds to soften it. Then a forming machine applies suction to draw the softened acrylic tightly over a mold in the shape of two diving boards. Fans blow cool air, hardening the acrylic to this shape within seconds. They extract the molded acrylic, then saw it in half to separate the two diving board shells. They coat the shell surface in a resin and fiberglass mixture. This tool is called a chopper gun because it chops and shreds the fiberglass string, then shoots it out drenched in resin. They roll it to compress the fibers and push out air pockets. Any trapped air would create a weak spot in the diving board. After letting the resin dry and harden for 30 minutes, they begin filling the shell cavity with half centimeter thick fiberglass mat. They drench the mat in resin, rolling it all over to ensure every millimeter gets well saturated. They lay down another fiberglass mat, this one a bit thinner, and saturate it with the existing resin. The diving board's core is made of laminated wood, which is several thin layers of wood glued together. Laminated wood is actually stronger than a solid piece of wood. After rounding the top edge, they lay two wood laminate cores over the resin-saturated fiberglass mats. They position clamps to hold the cores in place. But before tightening, they insert metal spacers to ensure the cores are correctly positioned within the shell. Once the positioning is perfect, they tighten the clamps and let the resin cure at room temperature for a half hour or so. Then the clamps come off and workers cover the cores with an even thicker fiberglass mat impregnated with resin. This is the bottom of the diving board. They make sure the mat is centered then manually form it to the shape of the board, pushing out the air pockets as they go. They spray on some decorative paint, then put the board in an oven for 24 hours to cure. When it comes out, they use a diamond blade to saw off the excess fiberglass around the edge. Then they do a final trimming to make the edge neat and smooth. They mask the sides with tape, leaving only the top exposed. This is where they'll now apply a rough texture, a safe, non-slip surface. First, they roll on a thin coat of resin. Onto that, they sprinkle a layer of silica sand making sure to cover the surface thoroughly and evenly. The sand sticks to the resin, which sets and cures in about 15 minutes. After sweeping off the excess sand that didn't adhere, they roll on a coat of laminating resin, which bonds to the sand, giving the surface a clean, finished look. They pull off the tape and apply the manufacturer's decal to the side. The diving board is now all set to be installed on a stand at the edge of the deep end to await anyone ready to take the plunge.